Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga. Today I'm gonna show you one more game from Fort All Russian Masters Tournament in St. Petersburg in 1906. Um, and Akiba Rubinstein went there with Gersh Salve, his friend from uh, Łódź Chess Club and uh, Gersh Salve actually won this tournament while Akiba Rubinstein was third. And, and today I would like to show you the game where uh, Akiba Rubinstein as white uh, play against uh, Benjamin Blumenfeld. Uh, who play as black and uh, ranking of Akiba Rubinstein at that time 2562 according to chess metrics and very strange but Benjamin Blumenfeld doesn't have the record in chess metrics and he was a pretty strong uh, player um, as I told you he was second in this uh, tournament and also he was uh, inventor of Blumenfeld Gambit if you are interested so uh, very strange that he doesn't exist his record doesn't exist uh, i will write to actually chess metrics maybe they can update that uh, but for now i can only uh, estimate his strength for 2500 uh, just remember that he was the second during that tournament and also in 1903 he won against aaron nimzovich so um, that's what we know about uh, mr blumenfeld and without further ado, let's jump into the game. Uh, Rubinstein opened with d4. And if you would like to know what is Blumenfeld Gambit, uh, it was not played in this game because Blumenfeld here is 21 years old. So he didn't invent it yet. He did it later. Uh, but if you are interested, uh, Blumenfeld Gambit is played as black. And uh, after knight on f6, c4, e6. Uh, we would have knight f3 and then c5, so not d5, but just c5. And then um, white can push and then we have b5, sacrificing the pawn. And actually taking that pawn is not good for white, so usually it's not played. Uh, bishop on g5 is the most popular and um, d takes on e6 is possible so um, this is blumenfeld gambit however in this game we don't have blumenfeld gambit we have d5 a knight f3 by rubinstein 9 f6 and e3 so rubinstein went for the call system he he weighed with his c4 and the idea is to bring uh, bishop on d3 first uh, and now we have bishop on f5 uh, played by Blumenfeld. This is anti-call system uh, and bishop on d3 is still possible. Uh, and then bishop can take and, and also uh, queen can uh, pick up back or c takes on d5 even better because white would have very strong pawn center which later can be pushed. So um, that's quite interesting. However, Rubinstein just plays c4. Uh, so nothing fancy. We have e6 by Blumenfeld and queen on b3. Knight on c3 is the most popular, but queen on b3 and Rubinstein already attacking uh, b7 pawn as the bishop defending is already on this diagonal. And here we have the trap knight on c6. So Blumenfeld uh, definitely know what to play uh, until now at least. Uh, and knight on c6. And now if white pick up b7, that's interesting, but bishop on b7 is a trap and black would stand better now. Knight on b4 now is very strong move. So uh, white won the pawn, but gonna lose probably the rook. If, if knight on a3 is played, then the, then the game is very complicated, but actually uh white gonna lose the minor piece if they play correctly if not they gonna lose the queen so uh it's interesting to show how it can happen because uh, many of us definitely has this situation uh, where the poison pawn is taken and how to catch the queen so this is one of the ways a6 here now the pawn is defended by the knight uh, and now c5 so now knight is not defended by the bishop so it's under attack uh, but now rook on b8 attacking and defending also the knight 
So queen only move is queen on e7. All other um, squares are controlled by black. And now queen on c8 is very strong. And now uh, black actually can catch the, the queen. So what to do now? The only move is actually c6. Uh, and now if rook on a8, then actually queen can go to b7. So what to do now? Rook on b6 and now we have another threat and attack the queen from this side. Uh, so knight on e5 can defend but then we would have bishop on d6 attacking the knight. Uh, and then uh, white doesn't have any more chances to do anything here so um, bishop on a6 uh, sacrificing the bishop and that's the only way to save the queen. Now we would have uh, rook on a6 queen on b7 and after exchanging just rook on b6 and black stands better because they are the minor piece up so that would happen and also after taking on b7 uh, and playing knight on b4 white could play maybe a bit stronger uh, or maybe more interesting don't defend the square on c2 uh, and rather play c takes on d5 and now this is the threat so quite interesting so knight on c2 is of course um, possible to play uh, and now after king on d1 bishop on d6 making a space for the king that that would be the probably only good option for black uh, so after bishop on d6 bishop on b5 would come king f8 and now uh, position of black is better and um, and also this knight on c2 actually can pick up the the rook probably for free then can retreat back and continue the, the game if white try to catch the bishop um, then bishop can retreat to g6 and then after exchanging then this rook would have the, the semi open h file for playing uh, so all is good for for black and black would have the the huge advantage and um, and of course win the game this is why after knight on c6 played by um, Blumenfeld, Rubinstein didn't take um, the b7 pawn, he play c5. And now Rubinstein actually can uh, capture the b7 pawn because the, the knight can't go to b4 because I uh, don't have the support from the bishop as this diagonal is blocked by the pawn on c5. So uh, we have rook on b8, black has to uh, defend and now bishop on b5 attacking the uh, knight. And now the only move and it's still playable sometimes in even in the 21st century and it's quite good for black. The only move actually for black is knight on d7. However, Blumenfeld play bishop on e7 and this is the move which probably losing the game now white gonna get all the initiative and uh, pick the uh, winning chances so we have knight on e5 now attacking the the knight and knight is also pinned so um, there is nothing black can do about that we have castle uh, knight on d7 now could be played but it doesn't change uh, much the character of the game the, the continuation is um, very much the same so castle by Benjamin Blumenfeld and now we have bishop takes on c6 b takes on c6 with attack on the queen so queen can move actually on and attack c6 but uh, Rubinstein just straight takes on c6 with his attack on the on the queen so we have rook takes on b3 knight takes on d8 uh, and now rook retreat to b8 uh, Rubinstein play knight on c6 forking the rook but also the the bishop bishop is unprotected so uh, the rook has to go on e8 and now we have knight on c3 developing the piece now we have knight on d7 um, with the idea of pushing e5 as now e5 was not possible and uh, Rubinstein could take on a7 but he waits uh, for this move e5 first uh, so he just play b4 always um, a good move to push the, the pawns especially if you have advantage um, on the queen side in this case in on the queen side we have bishop on f6 supporting the the move e5 
and here we have a4 by Rubinstein. And here Blumenfeld probably should do something with this a7 pawn, maybe move a6 uh, would solve um, his problems, but he calculated uh, something different, he wanted to open the center first, so e5 was played and Rubinstein takes on d5. Uh, we have bishop on e4, if he takes on d4 now, um, then knight on f6, knight on f6 and then just knight on d4 uh, solve all the problems. So that was not um, the intention of Blumenfeld, he play bishop on e4, now attacking these um, knights and the knights has to do something. So the first knight of course with tempo f6, with check, we have g takes on f6 and the second knight jump to a7 picking a pawn on a7 and here we have culmination of Blumenfeld's idea c6 and now the knight is actually trapped. So all this idea was to trap the knight. Uh, of course these uh, squares are controlled by black. The problem is the calculation is not really precise because Rubinstein have f3 and now if bishop on d5 we would have e4. Uh, e takes on d4, now the pawn is pinned so can be taken but king f2 and everything works perfectly now, bishop on c4, knight on c6 and white actually would have very strong connected pass pawns and um, easy win of the game. So after f3, uh, rook a8 by Blumenfeld, he don't want to lose this c6 pawn. We have f takes on e4, rook takes on a7 and now d5. Rook d8 and here Rubinstein play the move after which one uh, Benjamin Blumenfeld resigned the game uh, and he play castle, he just castle and black just resigned. If c takes on d5 then e takes on d5 and of course four uh, connected pass pawns uh, winning the game uh, and if rook on c8 trying to defend at least this pawn then bishop on d2 one of the lines uh, of course almost everything winning here but this is interesting because this bishop actually now can control b4 and king if king moves closer uh, to the action for example f8 now this is the the problem. D takes on c6, rook takes on c6 and now b5. And this pawn actually can't be taken because of this pin, so rook would have to go on c8, now we would have just c6, knight b6 and then bishop on b4. Anyway, king e8 coming closer but now a5, um, so harassing the knight, knight c4, uh, and here rook f on c1, still harassing the knight. Knight can take on e3 but it doesn't matter and even the knight is far now from the, from the action. So b6, uh, rook on e7, if rook on a8 then, then we would have uh, b7, rook a7 but then just exchanging and um, b7 is winning the game. Rook b8, c7 and of course um, that's enough, don't need to show more how to win this game. And Blumenfeld of course knew about that, this is why um, when the castle happened then he just resigned the game. And I promise you the story, the story, I'm not gonna tell you the full story, but in the, the round before the last one, Rubinstein play important game from the Blumenfeld's point of view. Uh, because Blumenfeld was interested uh, Rubinstein not get all the points, full two points in the last two games uh, because his position was very shaky and he was not sure he gonna be the second uh, and he started to make a lot of noise as only Rubinstein played the game uh, and Rubinstein started to uh, make uh, you know weak moves and lost that game, he appealed to the referee a referee said, okay, let's um, start the game, not from the beginning, but from the uh, time control. Uh, and Rubinstein won that game, but he said, okay, I don't want to win in that fashion, so let's make a draw. And this is why Rubinstein is on the third place and Blumenfeld on the second place uh, in this tournament. However, as you see, Rubinstein was very uh, fair play. Um, player and uh, Blumenfeld did everything to, to just, um, you know, uh, get the good results in this tournament.
That's all for today and if you like this video press like, if you don't like for some reason press unlike, leave the comment what you think about Akiba Rubinstein, fair play, attitude and of course uh, press subscribe, press the bell button if you don't want to miss um, another parts of Rubinstein saga and uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.